This is FIFA 96. It's a computer game. Uh, came out when I was in year 11. And when it came out, it was the most realistic football game ever released. I played it loads and loads. I played it way too much. I played it all the way through uh, the revision period for my GCSEs when I should have been revising. This is FIFA 21. And you can straight away see the difference in graphics. Um, but there's also huge differences in terms of how it plays, the tactics, the players, the range of movement. And it feels completely different to playing FIFA 96. And the big difference here is how realistic it is. Uh, if you don't like computer games or you don't like football, don't worry. I'm not going to talk about those two things for the entirety of this assembly. This assembly isn't really about football or computer games. Uh, it's not even about uh, spending too much time uh, playing games when you should be revising for your GCSEs. It's about something much more important. So today I want to talk about reality. Um, I'm going to spend the next few minutes questioning some of your assumptions about reality. There'll be a bit of football and some computer games um, and some computer science, but actually this assembly is going to be about philosophy because deep down everything is really about philosophy. Now, computers have come a long way in the last 25 years since I started playing FIFA 96. Uh, and when we think about the future, there's actually a good way of predicting how much better computers will get. Back in the 1970s, a computer scientist called Gordon Moore predicted that our technological advancements would allow us to double the complexity of a microchip every two years. That means roughly every two years, computing processing power would double. And he was more or less right. Over the last 50 years or so, since he made that prediction, every two years, our computers have got roughly twice as powerful. Now, if something keeps doubling, we call that growth exponential. So it doesn't go up by the same amount each time, it goes up by more each time. And that's expressed by this graph here. Imagine, as an example, that your age doubled every two years, like computing power does. So by the end of year 11, Instead of being 16, you'd actually be 256. When you finish year 13, you'd be 512. And when you finish university and start looking for a job, you'd be 2,048 years old. This massive rate of improvement in computing power might continue just like this graph, or it might start going even faster. Google, Microsoft, IBM, and others are spending billions of dollars developing quantum computers which have the potential to massively outperform any computer we have today. So whatever happens in the future, we can pretty much guarantee that computers in the future will continue to get more and more powerful. So look again at the difference between FIFA 96 and FIFA 21. Look at how much more realistic it's become in 25 years. Then think about what it will be like in another 25 years. What will FIFA 46 look like? What will it feel like? What will it play like? Maybe in 2046, you'll be a teacher making an assembly about computer games. And by the way, if that sounds depressing, um, maybe you should do some revision for your GCSEs, unlike, unlike me. Um, but if you do make that assembly in 2046, what will the game be like by then? Or what about in 50 years time? What will FIFA be like in 100 years time or in 1000 years time? We already have fairly good virtual reality. This is Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. And Facebook are investing huge amounts of money improving VR. Imagine how much better that will be in 100 years time or in 1000 years time. So working on the assumption that computer processing power roughly doubles every couple of years, what will computers be able to do in 1000 years time? What could we use them for? Now, one of the answers to that question will be, well, we'll use them like we do today for simulations. We will simulate things, whether it's uh, football uh, or anything else, we will start running simulations on these computers of the future. Uh, here's another game I used to play. This is The Sims. This is the version from 2000 when I had a, a copy. Um, and there have been several versions since then. So this is the, the more recent one, the latest one, I think 2014. This is a life simulation game. So in this game, you get a job, you buy a house, or you build a house, you raise a family. Um, and imagine what our life simulation games will be like in a thousand years time. They'll be completely realistic. And it won't just be a simulation of one family or one town. In the future, we'll be able to run realistic life simulations 
of the entire planet. In fact, in the future, we'll be able to simulate the entire universe. And being in this simulation will feel completely real. It will be like a massive online multiplayer life simulation, so realistic that nobody in it even knows they're in a simulation. And we won't just make one version of this simulation of the universe. Why would we do that? There is more than one copy of FIFA 96. We would make loads of versions of the simulated universe. Let's run a simulation to see what the universe would be like if Boris Johnson wasn't prime minister. Let's run a simulation to see what it'd be like if sexism didn't exist. Let's run a simulation to see how I'd have turned out if I'd revised for my GCSEs. Let's run a simulation to see what would happen if all year 11 students listened to their virtual assemblies about reality. So here comes the philosophy bit that I promised at the beginning. One day, we will make millions of simulations of the universe. This seems very likely. It might not be soon. It might take a few hundred or even a few thousand years, but it seems possible. In fact, I'd argue it seems probable because when it becomes possible for us to do it, we will. These simulations will be useful. A teacher could run a simulation to see how different bits of the lesson might go. A football manager could run a simulation trying out different lineups to see what the result would be. Politicians could run simulations seeing how people will vote on different policies. The idea actually that we would only make millions of simulations is probably an underestimate. I think we'd make billions of these simulations of the universe. Now these simulations in the future will be so realistic that the characters in the simulation will think they're real. It wouldn't be realistic if the characters knew they were in a simulation and they would have to have experiences, thoughts, feelings, just like real humans do. Otherwise, the, the simulation would be pointless. It would have to be completely realistic. So in the future, there'll be millions of simulations of the universe. And these simulations will be so realistic that the characters in it will think they're real. So if there will be millions of simulations, and if there's only one actual reality, the probability that this is the real reality is millions to one, probably actually billions to one. This, this assembly, this planet, this life is almost certainly a simulation you are almost certainly not real. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. This argument is known as simulation theory. Elon Musk has said he thinks we're probably living in a simulation. Uh, but this idea has lots of history in philosophy. It goes back at least two and a half thousand years, back to some ideas by a guy called Plato here on the right. Um, I mean, he didn't have computer games, he didn't play FIFA, but he said that actually we can't prove that anything we think of as reality is really real. And in fact, he thought that we were living uh, in, a, in a version of reality that wasn't really real at all. So we are probably, according to this theory, not real. This is just a computer simulation. And you are just a character in some simulation that's been made in the future for some purpose that we don't really know. Now, if you don't like that idea, so for example, you don't like the idea that your family aren't real, your friends aren't real, nothing you ever do matters. If you don't like those ideas, don't worry. There is a way out of this, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is. If you wanna prove that you actually exist, or at least you're interested in trying, uh, then you need to look into taking philosophy A-level. Um, if you were interested in the stuff earlier on, on computing power, virtual reality, quantum computers or computer games, have a look at the computer science A-level. Uh, and obviously you could do both of those A-levels together. They'd complement each other really well. Um, but obviously to get onto any of these A-levels, you will need to stop playing computer games and do some revision for your GCSEs. And if this assembly has given you an existential crisis, if you're suddenly doubting your own existence and worrying about the fact that you're not real, then you can talk to me about it. You can email me your existential questions. You can come and talk to me. I'm mostly at the time I'm in T09. My name is Mr. Aldridge. Uh, and it'd be nice to uh, talk to you about these things, or at least it would if you were real.